If this video reaches 1,000 likes, we'll be giving away two of our t-shirts from the Malliminous store. There are a lot of jokes about going to Equestria. I don't think it's really abnormal for a fandom surrounding a mystical area or land to fantasize about actually going to said land. Whether you're one of the Lotro kids or WoW kids or any of the other MMORPGs, a lot of people love the immersion. They love to fantasize about actually going to one of those worlds. A lot of them don't think about the repercussions of such an event such as you're not going to have your iPhone. You're not going to just be pressing a key, you're going to have to actually be doing those actions. The day to day grind, the survival, it's a lot. And unfortunately, modern humans, we're domesticated. We don't have the means to survive anymore. We rely on the infrastructure that we've set up. And sadly, if there was some sort of catastrophic event, most of us would die. And eventually, we would die out. Humans as we know them would probably cease to exist quite quickly after an apocalyptic scale event. And new creatures would inhabit this planet. And that's the theme of today's video. What if Equestria isn't some place that we can go to? Because we're already on the planet that Equestria is on. What if Equestria is not just a different universe, but just a place that's farther in the future after humans? You see, this got me thinking. We see one of the characters, Dr. Hoofs here. Obviously, a character based off of the character known as Dr. Who. Dr. Who is a Time Lord. He is able to travel between time, but he's not able to travel between different dimensions. Those are locked off to him. Yes, I know there's old doctors, but clearly it's based off of the newer one. So Doctor Who isn't allowed to go to different dimensions. And that might explain why we don't actually see him in the Equestria Girls series. Because he can't go there. Now there may be a doctor there, but we haven't seen him yet. But his existence shows us that this isn't some other universe. This is our universe. So I know what you're thinking. Why couldn't it be one of the other tens of thousands of planets that have been calculated to be able to support carbon-based life? Well, there's a few things. But you are right. There are a lot of other planets that have been calculated to exist out there that could potentially support life as we know it. Technically, it could be running concurrently with our timeline right now. It could just be very far away. But see, this is why I say it's our planet. If you look, a lot of the tools, a lot of the language, a lot of the culture is based off of humanity's remnants. Tools are specifically made for those who have hands, and yet these ponies use them. Shovels and the likes are, are definitely not made with hoofs in mind. In fact, for a lot of them, if they weren't able to just somehow magically stick it to their hooves or use their telekinesis, they wouldn't be able to use said objects effectively at all. But why do they have them? We see that there are certain devices that are made specifically for ponies, but a lot of it is based on human design. There are a million and one different ways our planet could have died. In fact, if you want to know something that may be a little bit scary to you if you actually think about it, we're overdue for another extinction. We're overdue to die. Right now, we're living by the grace of the universe. We're overdue for Yellowstone in America to erupt, taking out a majority of the population. We're overdue for a lot of things. So far, we've been coasting by on just pure luck, but all good things come to an end. And I guess eventually we don't get so lucky. Maybe it's by ourselves. Maybe we finally push the buttons and mutually assured destruction takes hold. Maybe it's a comet. Maybe Yellowstone erupts and we're no longer able to survive. There could be a lot of things that happen, but just Doctor Who's very existence tells us that we're on our planet. We may not recognize it. We may not want to acknowledge it. But it looks like there is no portal to Equestria because Equestria is here. Because we were too lazy to conserve what we had. Because we were too lazy to expand our worlds. Because we were too lazy to realize that these arbitrary boundaries and borders that we have set up as humans are meaningless. 
that skin color and nationality mean nothing if we're all dead. And maybe that's why this new world is so obsessed with friendship and getting along. Because they've seen the horrors of war. They see the scars and remnants of this planet. If it was nuclear, that would explain the mutations of all these creatures. And this isn't the first show to do this. Of course, we're reaching, and I don't think that the show writers intended this to be the fact, but by them throwing in this throwaway character that's an homage to another show, they've created another darker, deeper possible outcome of Equestria. In fact, MOP unintentionally aligns a lot more with Adventure Time. Adventure Time is after the Great Mushroom War, in which a giant-sized bomb filled the world with some sort of chemical, and it started mutating things. And eventually, we get the world that we see today in Adventure Time. Shows have done this in the past, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. Just look at the Disney theory. Anyways, guys, that's just my theory, a yeah, pony theory. I hope you guys enjoyed and let me know what you guys think down below. As always, these are meant for fun, so don't take it too seriously. But it's fun to overthink. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.